man today. Are you serious right now? Now, I expected you to prove me right, but not this early on. Like I said, oh, what a time we are going to have, Mr. Anthony. Oh, mm. Hey, y'all. Thanks for clicking on the video. Listen, listen. Uh, this is my review for Love and Marriage Detroit. This is season one, episode two. Now, I told y'all in that first episode that me and Anthony was going to have a little power struggle. I told y'all, I told y'all, I told y'all, and I said, I said, I, I, I was, I was hoping that I would be wrong that I was going to have this back and forth thing with this Ed, this Anthony character. He done proved me completely right. No, we're going to have a time. You are a hot, hot mess. But we're going to get to it in a minute. Ooh, Miss Anthony, don't do me. Don't do me, honey. Anyway, listen. Okay, so... We are going to go back to where we left off. We left off in episode one at the anniversary dinner, um, the picnic, the anniversary picnic that just went left. And basically, Brandon, I didn't know he could actually do it, but he had that sweet talk to his wife. He sweet talked her and got her back on board. Okay. Got her back on board. And she said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and table this now. Because one, it was way too mortifying. It was way too mortifying to really deal with at that point. I thought all your friends, all your closest friends and this whole foolishness. So she said she's going to go ahead and table it. I said, well, I mean, yeah, what do you do? The fact that she had already broke out crying and stuff was we were already so far over the side with it that it didn't need no more energy. It really did. It didn't deserve any more energy, just a mess. So that was that. Finished out the party. They danced. They did, you know, just sucked it at Buttercup. And that, and that was it. I said, that's, that's it. That's an 11-year wife. An 11-year wife, for the most part, knows when to and when not to. She had already let herself get into the win not twos anyway, but ain't no need to just completely embarrass yourself, you know. Well, we're too late. But anyway, let's move on over. Let's go over to Colby and Russell's house. Shall we go over there? Colby and Russell is in there doing some little stuff in the house and, and carrying on. And he he was telling her, you know, I think it's best that we stay out of other people's business. So basically, he was chin checking her on the fact that, and as he should have, as he should have, because she didn't do it on purpose, but you done went outside and told something that I told you, and now you got me looking bad in these streets. So again, he was wrong for what he did for telling it. But I mean, that's the pillow talk. And she was wrong for taking it out of the house. And then she kept going forth with it about how wrong it was and this, that thing, and the other. She didn't want to let it go. When he asked her multiple times to let it go, let's mind our business, let's mind our business, let's mind our business. And he was very nice. He didn't chin check her really in front of the people. And she just wouldn't let it go. Um, then he goes and he decides to drop on her that he is going to change his career. She's a preacher's child already. He comes and tells her basically he's going to change his career. He wants to be an ordained minister. And she's like, oh, what? She's completely not on board for this. She's not fond of the way she grew up. Um, she doesn't want her children to be raised like preacher's kids, like she was. 
you know, all all the stuff that goes along with it, all the leaving the house and all that stuff. Christina, I believe, is the preacher's kid as well. So, yeah, because they actually talked about it later in the episode. Um, she just didn't see that for herself. She says, I'm not I'm trying to be nobody's first lady. And listen, I have a friend who is the first lady. And I remember when, you know, it all started and she was young, you know, she was a young woman, you know, she was like just approaching her thirties and here she is being this first lady. And it was interesting. It was a very interesting dynamic. Um, and I won't go into, you know, a lot of things that we've actually talked about because we had in-depth conversations and I was like, girl, trust me. The, the wife of a first lady, honey, she gets to wear the big hats and have the private parking spot. She earns it. She earns it. The wife, the, the life of a first lady, it is really no joke. It really is not. It, it's a lot of smiling and grinning when you don't want to, when you don't want to. So I totally get where um, Colby was coming from. And, you know, having my friend, and being that close of a friend to her is how I actually was able to see it through her lenses. Because, you know, normal, well, say, I say normal people don't really know what the first lady actually goes through. And that's on a husband that ain't trying to be sideways. You know, I, I could just only imagine if you had a husband that's trying to be sideways, because trust me, every opportunity to be sideways is totally there. It is totally there and present. It is there and present at all times. And some of them church members is a mess. But anyway, she wasn't feeling any of that. So I got that. Here it is. He didn't already start in school. Then already started. And he also throws in. He wants to open a gym. She already was making reference to, she said, I know you already have an affair with the gym. So he spends a lot of time with gym. You see, well, I mean, because that's the first thing that they gave us is about this body of his. And he is built up real nice, but it's, he spends a lot of time in the gym. So now he wants to open a gym. Um, and then it hit me. As I told you, I told you there was something about Russell that just didn't sit real well with me. And I saw it in that in that scene, because this is a pretty long scene. It came all to him like he's manipulative. He is manipulative as hell. So, yeah, um, money wise, Miss Colby, you'll be fine. You'll be fine because I think that he'll make a wonderful pastor or minister. Um, would I sit up underneath him? No. No, not at all. Um, I seen, I just seen him to be so manipulative. I said, oh my God. Um, I think he would definitely be able to lead a church to do the things that he wants them to do. Um, he's very confident in his lead with her and very confident in throwing this Bible at her. I said, the Bible says this and the Bible says that. And if you read in your Bible, you, I said, that Bible would get your ass cussed out. Yes, it would. All that. Mm -mm. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. You don't use that book to control me. You go over there and control them. Don't come over here playing with me. Um, yeah, it was a lot. I, I was seeing different things, even just how he speaks to her. I was saying, uh, uh, that old, that manipulative spirit you got on you. Mm mm. Mm -mm. Yeah, you go in the right direction. It's per perfect. Perfect for whoever's going for it. I said, oh, man, they're going to have some problems. And again, I was sitting there watching her and I kept saying, she looks so much better with less makeup and just her hair. She had her hair pulled up. So beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. That whatever, whoever was doing your stuff for your confessionals, these first confessionals, either alter it or let them go. That hair, you'll need all that hair, all that 
all, you don't need all that and you don't need all that makeup. You, she's beautiful without all that stuff. Too much makeup is she's really bordering like it's rolling into the drag thing. And it's like, uh, uh you don't need all that. That's what it was. Where I kept looking at her, I'm like, girl, you rolling into like drag. It's like you, they had her like painted for the people in the cheap seats in the back. It's like, she don't need none of that. She really don't. Less for her is definitely more. When she was there in that scene working on the house, she looked, Kobe looked absolutely stunning with like hardly any makeup on. She really did. She really did. She don't need all that makeup. Anyway. And you know, that's all pet peeve about the woman overpainted. What's the point? What's the point? You gotta paint like no drag queen unless you're doing drag. She ain't getting on stage nowhere. You know, she ain't getting on stage. This is just a regular, she ain't need nothing. Anyway, moving on. Um, Brandon and Christina. They having this chit chat. She over there reading her Bible and all this kind of carrying on us, okay? She's trying to get past what she got going on. You better read some more. Read faster, girl. Um, and I'm noticing what's going on here. Brandon, you need to knock it off. He's blaming Colby for everything. He's throwing all of this in Colby's lap saying that she's a mean girl. And then he even went as far as to say that she is swagger jacking Christina. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Some of what he was saying sounds like it may be valid. And when he said it, she felt the need to defend it because she sees it happening herself. This is why I've, I've sat and said this in my life. I don't really mess with people who do what I do. You know, it's, and like I have, I've had, I've had friendships with some other people who are social media folk, but you, you gotta be very careful with them. You have to be very careful with them. Um, We can only ever be so close. And that's it. You just said that's a whole nother. This is another topic for another time. There's some other stuff on my channel that you can actually see that. But I talk about it a little bit. I, I mm, mm, That's why you got to watch. People will swagger jack you. People will steal your ideas. You have to watch. It's, it's, it's difficult to sit in those spaces. You know, you get excited about something, people will steal your ideas and stuff. People will do it. They'll do it. And it will tear your friendship apart. So some of what he was saying about the swagger jack and stuff, I, I said it rings true because she immediately started defending it. And I was like, okay. Um, but for me, Brandon, the fact that you did wrong. So let's not let's not skip past that. Sweetheart, you did wrong. You did wrong. You withheld information from your wife because there's something in there you ain't right. You ain't right. And the more we went through this episode, you're not happy. You're not happy. I believe you almost right back where you were, where y'all had your first problems is what I'm kind of gathering. And you had and stuff and you being you being secretive and we're going to get to what you had done. You ain't right. OK, you ain't right. You know, you ain't right. You trying to cover your tracks and you're throwing it all in Colby's lap, which some would call bitch assness. And that's what you were distributing. Bitch assness. And that was that's not cool. And I think that somewhere down the line it's gonna be a problem. It's gonna be a problem. You need to back up off of Colby. You wrong. And I'm telling you now, before we even get any further in this, you wrong. And I'm seeing a pattern with you with this Colby thing. Some of it is is probably warranted, but you jumped on it. It's when and where you jumped on it. Um, not a good look. Anyway, moving on. Let's go over to Anthony and Latoya. I told y'all something went right with them, didn't I? 
I told y'all something went right with them. We got this whole little thing. They got counseling there and counseling and everything. They didn't been to counseling and all that about that. You know, those them two living in the separate spaces and him kind of just wanting to go off and do what he wants to do and not consult with her. And then the next thing she knows she's in it and it almost tore their marriage apart. Here's the thing. He's OK, but she not. He feels like he'd have moved on past it and want to move. He don't really want to talk about it. He don't really want to talk about it because there's some mess around surrounding it. And then he's trying to go back to Atlanta. Here's the thing. She ain't okay. She ain't okay. You can see it all in her face. She is not okay. I said, child, that little sweeping under the rug or that little bit of appeasing that you thought you did with her, your wife ain't okay. She not okay with it. She not. And you moving, you moving around like everything's fine. You don't even want to talk about it. You want to act like it never happened while trying to get and dive back into it again. Child, we'll be watching. Anyway, moving on. Now they go down to the club with we meet Bravo. Bravo cute. We down there, Bravo runs the club. Here it is. Brandon ain't supposed to be at the club because you know his wife and her babble toting, she ain't filling the club because of what whatever this past was and all of that. She she really contributes what happened to the club and all of that. Okay, so she's holding on to this Bible and she threw the Bible at him. Christian man, shit, I said, oh, y'all killing me with this. Y'all are killing me with this Bible swinging and Bible throwing. All of this Bible guilt, I can't stand it. It is driving me nuts and we're only in the second episode. Um, so the Bible has its place and what it has its place in but guilting someone using the Bible, people just do what people want to do. It ain't no need, y'all. So that's, that's, I don't like it. I don't like it. It's getting on my nerves already. But anyway, so Brandon's down here at the club. Um, and I notice I'm watching him. Brandon's not stupid. Brandon does not trust Anthony. And that's very smart. That's very smart. But I picked that up, right? He don't trust Anthony. He doesn't trust Anthony. Um, Russell did give him an apology. Um, Russell gave him an apology. Then there was a phone call from Christina. And he lied and said they was down at the church or whatever. Now, Christina ain't stupid. You know, she said, do I hear Bravo's voice, this, that thing, and the other? He's like, yeah, we all together, but we at the church. This, that thing, and the other. That lied, okay? Anthony laughed. It's like, you done lied, this, that, thing, the other, whatever, whatever, whatever. I said, okay. So all of that didn't happen down at the club. He's basically, he wasn't doing anything wrong. He really wasn't doing anything wrong. They were at the club. Deals get made at the club. You know, it just happens. And here it is. They, they're they going to use this. They want to do this whole uh, showcase that goes toward this music. And they're going to use the club as the venue. And all of that. So they're basically setting up a scouting concert. Um, all of this for his artists. Okay. So um, here's the situation with the past. With the past. They gave us the information about the past. In the past, there was a situation with an artist. He got too involved with the artist. Um, he claims there was no sex but he got emotionally involved with the artist and it caused a problem in the marriage, okay? So naturally, developing an artist, y'all be at the club and stuff. So the club, it brings the connotation back and it brings all the issues for her and it makes her very, it makes Christina very uneasy, the thing about the club. But see, that's where the insecurities tr get triggered because you don't trust Brandon. You're not trusting Brandon with your person and your feelings. And I hate to say it, but you're smart not to trust Brandon with your feelings because you're not in a position to be trusted with your feelings. Okay. Anyway, so here's another thing that I caught while they were down at the club. Was another thing when they were down at the club. The first warning shot has been fired.
Because again, he's talking, Brand is talking to Russell, and he's saying, you know, basically he's throwing everything in Colby's lap. And he basically, I mean, he's like, it's like, this is not all on Colby. Now, I apologize to you. Colby wasn't trying to do anything. And he said, she did it in a mean girl spirit. He said, trust me, if, if Colby wanted to get you, she'd have already gotten you. So you could take this for what it what it is, Brandon. That was your first warning shot about getting up off of Colby's back. And it came from Russell. But you could take it for what it is that you want. You could act like you didn't hear it and you didn't understand it. But that was a warning shot, my brother. You leave his wife alone. And I think you need to, because again, bitch assness. Anyway, and I don't think that's gonna go over too well with Mr. Russell. Um, and it was so funny when you said, Well, why don't you you could direct that your uh energy toward me? And he like, No, you too big. I said, Did he just say that? And I'm like, that was one of those little looky loos. That's why I'm like my grandmother used to say, you cracking, but you facking. You said we're trying to make a little joke, but you really telling the truth. Bitch ass this. And a bit of poop all wrapped in it. I said, ooh, that was very unattractive. That was very unattractive. I said, mm. Mm. you might want to lower your ponytail down. You wear your ponytail up too high. Anyway, yeah, I said it. Moving on. So he, like I said, there at the club, he explained the situation about what happened last time. And here's some of the things that he said. And I, I kind of touched on this in my last review. Once there are certain things that people say that will trigger me and I'll be like, I'm out. I'm done. I ain't even messing with you. Some just some statements that I will not sit underneath. And he said two of them. Shawa, he said that uh, he was texting and sending emails, sending texts back and forth. And he had left his laptop and Christina got into the laptop and that's how she found out about all of what was being shared and that there was this emotional connection happening because he was talking smack about her. He started opening up to the artist like he said they were writing and they were just sharing information back and forth. Basically, you were cheating. You just hadn't gotten physical is what he's saying. But she's seen the messages back and forth, and he has said, I can't stand her. I can't stand her. See, some things you say you can't take back. I, there ain't no way I'd be in a relationship. You would never, you, one time, some things you just got to say, wait, whoa, what did you just say? I can't stand you. Trust me when I tell you, you ain't got to worry about standing me because I'm out. I can't stand you. Can't take that back. Not with me. That don't work. I can't stand when they said that. That was in there. I can't stand you. I was like, oh, my God, no. And then he said, I was one foot out the door. Well, what the hell? Here's a banana pillar. The hell on up out of here. Bye. So. Mm -mm. That I'm like, strike three, you're out already, Brandon. You're done. Last episode we heard, I don't know why I even answered this phone. This time, he in the past, you just told her, that, well, he didn't tell her, he told somebody else I can't stand her. And I got one foot out the door. You saying this to another female. I would definitely help you out the door. I would grab you by your hand and I would drag you out of my door. You would not. I, that Nope. Sorry. There'd be no marriage. Irreconcilable differences. He can't stand me, Your Honor. I need out. I need out. I need support. I need um, support for these children. And he could not stand me from over there. I'm out of here. Moving on. Christina and Colby actually got together. Colby gave Christina an apology. Um, but was very stern and told her, you know, I I stand on everything I said about how I feel about how he handles things and that you don't deserve that. I stand on that. I can't take that back. But I do apologize about what I said and how it came out of my house, you know, and you didn't know. I, I, I apologize about how that made you feel. So I was like, well, that was cool. That was cool. 
Now, here's the here's the coup de gras, honey, in this episode here. We go to LaToya. LaToya has her wine company um, and her first wine opulence. It's her wine. She's having an opulence wine tasting. So they invite everybody. And I'm sitting there. She made a comment to Anthony about that you invite the fellows that you just said. He made a comment about, I only invited the pretty people. That's that thing and the other. And I just kind of looked at him and I was like, oh my God. I guess it's just going to be one of these things like you always just say something that just rubs me wrong. I only invited the pretty people. But you coming though, right? <laughs> okay. All right. All right. I was like, I don't know what the hell that was about. Just too, kind of, just too much. Anyway, so then we meet Chelsea. Chelsea is Christina's good friend, okay? So she was actually there. Child, we ain't been there too long. And then here is why Brandon is correct in not trusting Anthony. Anthony's big mouth. Just just pulled it out of nowhere, out of his ass. Oh, yeah. When we was down at the club the other day, I said, you are shady. You are shady. Oh, I'm so sorry, man. I didn't mean to. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Because you made reference to the fact that he was lying to his wife and you had an issue with it. And then you just accidentally blurted that out. You are shady. You are shady. You threw salt in the game yet again in front of the wife. And now here we go. Here we go. And then you're running your mouth. And then the next thing I know, Chelsea and Anthony get into it. And I'm looking at Anthony like, this is your event. This is you and your wife's event. The way in which he went at Chelsea was so ugly. So ugly. And I'm looking over there at Latoya like, I know you're mortified. If you're not, you should be. If you're not, you should be. And you should have been chin checking him. And you should have done it in front of everybody because he ain't give you no other choice. First of all, they're all customers at this point. And he acted an ass with one of the customers. Chelsea had just said, you know, I, I don't I know I just met you all. I love the wine. I'm really enjoying myself, but I just don't get why he's so invested in their business. Because at this point, uh Christina and Brandon are going back and forth, and Anthony's just bumping his gums. And he told her, you will know you. You need to stay in your lane. You're just a little girl, and don't play with me. I said, whoa, whoa, Silverado. Not Desperado, but Silverado. Why is you talking to her like that? And listen, Miss Chelsea, oh, baby, she is perfect for reality TV. I said, Carlos, you handpicked her yourself, didn't you? Carlos, you's a messy bitch. He picked Miss Chelsea. <laughs> He's queen moves on. Okay. <laughs> she said, she laughed at him. And came back up and said, okay, well, I'm going to let you have that because I see you done gotten your feelings and you might be on your cycle, baby. When I tell you I fell out, I said, now, Miss Chelsea, <laughs> Miss Chelsea, girl, you gut punched his ass with that one. <laughs> you might be on your cycle. I said, oh. And the funny part was, if you look real closely, when she said it, Latoya was damn near in a full chuckle her goddamn self. She did, girl, she gut punched the sh out of Anthony. I said, uh-huh, that's what you get. He gonna tell her, we buying buildings. You a bird. He gonna say, yeah. Um, He gonna tell uh Christina, you hanging with bosses now. You need to get rid of this bird. This, that, that. I was like, first of all, how dare you sit here, one, and speak to her the way you did? And then secondly, you calling her out of her name. You called her out of her, your name, out of her name. And I'm waiting. Like, Latoya, when are you going to stop them? Because it, it just get, gives me very much, if they keep going, 
He done already called her a bird. He don't even know what's next. Y'all know what's next, that other B word, right? I was like, we ain't having that out of you, Anthony. We not. We not having that out of you. And I'm waiting on Latoya. And I said, this is a mess right here. This is a mess. But Miss Chelsea, I think she got some more. When I tell you, the way she laughed at him, when he told her, don't play with him, don't play with you. Don't play with you. She laughed in his face. Tony, you might be on your cycle. You all up in your feelings. She ain't back down, not at all. I said, oh, yeah, I like her. I like Miss Chelsea. Girl, you got spunk, honey. But he ain't had no been talking to you like that. He didn't. He don't even know her. You don't even know her. It wasn't even that deep. She asked a question. And Latoya, you need to get your husband. Seriously, quickly. Get your husband. Because, again, first of all, she's a customer. This is a business meeting. Out of order, Mr. Anthony. And again, I told you, Anthony, as long as you do it, as long as you act that way, I'm going to come down here, I'm going to do my reviews, and I'm going to speak on you like you a big old queen. Because at this point, you acting like a big old queen. You acting more like one of my good Judy's as opposed to one of my heterosexual counterparts. You are acting like a big old queen. Said, a mess. Anyway, but this is where we ended out on episode two. Baby, look, Detroit, we all in. We are all in. I can't wait to see what happened in episode three. Whoop, I'll see y'all then. Later. Oh, messy Anthony.